Welcome to Your 7th Sense, a show for mission-driven entrepreneurs to evolve into unstoppable intuitive leaders. Listen to Terry and her guests as they share stories of being powered by angels and intuition to achieve their success. Now, let's unlock the power in you with your host, Terry Wildeman. Today's show is very, very special for me because we have a man who I believe is truly changing the world in spectacular ways. He has changed my life in many, many ways. And as you all know, I'm a holistic practitioner as well as an executive and business coach. And I became certified in the techniques that we're going to be talking about uh, just this past December. And I've been using these techniques for over five years. And what I know is it has transformed my life and my health, and it has transformed the life and health of the people who engage me to work with them to improve their businesses. So I am so happy and so excited to introduce you to Dr. Bradley Nelson. Welcome to the show, sir. Well, thank you, Terry. It's great to be here. And I'd like to read a little bit about your bio before we get into deep down and dirty with a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about. Okay. Dr. Bradley Nelson is the developer of the most advanced form of energy medicine on the planet, a holistic chiropractic physician and medical intuitive. Dr. Nelson is one of the world's foremost experts in the emerging fields of bioenergetics, bioenergetic medicine, and energy psychology. His best-selling book, Ta-da! Best-selling book, and he's got the new cover, which he'll show us later. But the Emotion Code is helping people all over the world to improve their lives and hidden, and, and I'm sorry, I can't even read this, right, ridding themselves of imbalances of emotional baggage. Users of the Emotion Code technique have found freedom from emotional problems such as depression and anxiety, as well as physical problems, including fatigue, pain, and disease. I became a certified, emotion, a certified emotion code practitioner specifically to help me with these things. And trust me, they really, really work. The key element of the emotion code is removing emotional baggage. Now, Dr. Nelson is an acclaimed and popular speaker on the international seminar circuit, and he travels to many countries around the globe teaching the emotion code seminar. He is, has been a guest on countless radio and television shows and has presented his very timely healing message to millions around the world. And you can read more about Dr. Bradley when the show goes live and you can read it down below because all of his links and there's a couple of freebies he's going to be sharing with us are found right below us, right there. Okay. So Dr. Nelson, I know that guidance played a huge part in helping you create, develop, and share the emotion code with the world. Can you tell me a little bit about how intuition tapped into your soul when it came to the emotion code? Sure, absolutely. Well, um, where to begin? You know, um, Really, the beginning of this for me was uh, uh, I, I had a miraculous thing that happened to me. The, the first miraculous thing that happened in my life, and I've seen a lot of crazy miraculous things, but uh, I was really sick with the measles when I was seven years old, and um, I was instantly healed through the prayer of my father. My, um, I had overheard my parents talking and I knew the plan. The plan was I was going into the hospital the next day to go into something called an oxygen tent. And I, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, the tent part of it sounded interesting, but I was too sick to enjoy it, you know. And uh, my parents had made a bed for me upstairs uh, on the couch so I could be near their bedroom. And everyone else had gone to bed and my folks came into the room and my mother said to my dad, she said, honey, will you kneel down and say a prayer so that our boy will be able to get well. And so so they, they knelt down by the side of the couch and my dad starts praying for me that I'll be able to get better. And my dad, this is probably the first time I'd ever heard my dad pray. Wow. My dad was in real estate. He was a great, I mean, really an amazing guy. Um, but uh, I'm sure it was the first time I'd heard him pray, but they were really worried about me. I was really sick. And in the middle of this prayer, I had this 
amazing thing that happened. It was a change started at the top of my head and it went whoosh through my body about that quick and I was instantly healed. Now to go from being really sick one moment to being totally vibrantly, completely healthy in the next instant is so bizarre and so impossible that you don't ever forget it as long as you live. And so I remember everything that night. And what that taught me at seven years old was that there's a higher power that we can draw upon. We can ask for help and we can get it because that's what happened there. My dad asked for help, boom, this thing happened. So, um, so fast forward, you know, uh, about another seven years and I was diagnosed with kidney disease and had terrific pain and uh, was really, really ill. Nothing medically could be done for me. My folks decided to take me to see some uh, uh, holistic doctors. And uh, there weren't very many of those back, you know, that long ago. But uh, these doctors practiced out on the edge of town in a uh, trailer house uh, in the middle of a wheat field. And you'd have to scrape the mud off your shoes to get into their trailer house. But they had busloads of people coming to them from different states because they really were healers. And, um, and they healed me and it didn't take long, you know, two, three weeks. And I was dramatically better. And, and, uh, and the tests back at the hospital proved it. And so that taught me the next thing. And that is that, gee, um, sometimes uh, if you just follow the money to the big hospital, that wasn't where the help was for me. It was out on the edge of town in a trailer house with some people that, uh, uh, you know, were kind of out practicing on the edge of society. They fixed me. And um, so when I got into practice, uh, I developed this habit of asking for help. And I, and I really believe that um, a lot of, a lot of uh, opening up your own intuition is to spend time listening and asking, right? If you ask uh, and you listen, you know, it, it's there and you're going to be able to get that information a lot more easily. I'll tell you something. Um, I really credit everything to, to prayer. During those years that I was in practice, and I practiced in one form or another for about 20 years, um, I had this private personal habit. Uh, whenever a patient would come in to see me, I would just take a moment before I'd go to work on them, and I would just try to connect with that higher power, you know, God, source energy, however you might refer to it, because I knew that I could get help if I asked, right? Because that's what had happened when I was a kid. And so I would just take a moment and ask for that help. And I'll tell you something. Um, usually when we are asking for help and we're trying to get some guidance, it usually comes in really subtle ways, right? The intuition that we, uh, that we generally, most of us overlook is in the form of a thought or an impression or an idea that we suddenly have. That's usually how it comes. And so that's usually how it came for me during those years. But I'll tell you something, Terry, um, there were times during those years when somebody would come in to see me and I didn't know how to deal with their issue, didn't know how to approach their problem. And I would just offer that silent routine prayer for help. And in response to that, uh, there were times when the information would just, when you talk about intuition, I mean, it would just be like a massive download of understanding and data, just like an avalanche of pure knowledge that would just fill me about what to do and how to look at this and how to help this person and how to conceive of what's going on with them. And it was an incredible thing. Now that, that kind of thing doesn't happen very often. We would love it if that happened every day. But out of all those 20 years, I can count the times that happened on one hand, okay? The rest of the time, it was just those subtle thoughts, impressions, ideas. That's how the, you know, that's how the intuition comes to us. But, um, but I'll tell you something, I really believe that if you ask, you receive. If you're trying to develop your intuition and you want to get answers and you want your life to work better, if you're not asking for help, and I don't think it matters really what you, what you believe so much. You know, everybody has different beliefs. But if you believe that there's something greater than yourself, ask. And uh, if you ask, you receive. And that's, um, that's an old, old saying. But notice that it doesn't say you'll receive. It, Right. The saying is, ask, and it is given. Right? knock, and it will be open to you. Right. And um, it doesn't say it'll be open to you. It, it just says, the, you know, it says you have to ask first. You have to knock first. 
and that opens the the uh, the door for that intuition to come to you. And intuition comes, you know, in different ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard voices, literally heard voices before. Yeah. Um, That's how I get my intuition. I hear voices and I get images. Cool. Yeah. I, get, I hear the voices first, usually on the left side. Really? Um, I've shared a story of, um, uh, we're a Navy family and uh, we were stationed in Norfolk, Virginia and we had to rush to the base for something, I forget what it was. And I had uh, my two little girls in the back seat and I was really stressed out. And I, uh, we didn't have GPS then. And it was one of those, I have no idea where I'm going. And my oldest daughter says to me, mom, your angels always speak with you. Would you just stop for a moment and let them talk with you? <laughs> so this is my little, my, this is my seven-year-old at the time. So I pulled over and, and I listened out of the mouth of babes. And I listened and I immediately got the image of where to go. And I, they literally directed me. And it was always Archangel Michael talks to me in this ear, which usually talks in the left ear. So I, I get it. I, I truly, truly get it. And the other thing, a piece I want to add to what you're talking about, especially where business people are concerned, because when we're in the workplace, we stress ourselves out because we don't ask. Because we think that it's a sign of weakness. When in fact, asking for help is a sign of strength because when you ask for help and it's given to you you're uh, you're actually engaging the people who work with you you're engaging teammanship you are engaging knowledge that somebody else may have that you don't have and you're making them feel special because you're asking for help so you know ask and it is given whether it's to god or whether it's your co-workers or whether it's an employee because you don't know asking for help is so valuable and so important in order to for all of us to be at peak performance whether it's in our personal lives or in the workplace so what you shared is so 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 important i can't uh, emphasize that enough so i know that when you got the downloads you were really wondering <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about times when you got downloads and you're asking, and you may be asking yourself, are you kidding me? Because I know that's what happens to a lot of folks who start to open up and all of a sudden they get scared and run in the opposite direction and shut it down. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, <clears throat> you know, one of the, uh, one of the times that comes to mind, I woke up, I, I actually hadn't been asking in this particular case, but, you know, many years of asking, it kind of got me to this point, I guess. Um, about a year after the emotion code came out, uh, it was in uh, 2008, I woke up one morning and my mind was full of instruction. And the instruction was, you need to take everything that you've learned about natural healing and put it into a self-study course that anyone can learn and make it available to everyone everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I remember... I mean, so clearly waking up and the instruction was so clear. There was no, it was indisputable. There was no question about what I was supposed to do. But, um, but I remember thinking, wow, this sounds like a lot of work. Are you sure about this? And I, I had to sit on this uh, for about three months, just thinking about it all the time, thinking about how much work it was going to be before I finally got started. And that became the, you know, the body code mm -hmm. um, version 1.0. And of course now we're at, version 2.1 I have which, to um, it looks like yeah <laughs> this is the body code this is what 2.0 right yes the body yep. code 2.0 when i got my when, when i got my uh <laughs> this set and i opened it up my jaw just dropped absolutely dropped. this is so comprehensive so amazing and i i just use it every day I love it because it's also, you can also get it, by the way, I'm going to show, I'm going to promote you here. You can also get, <laughs> download it online. You can uh, download a motion code online. I um, mean, you, you can just da download it to your phone. You can, it, it, it's just amazing. The whole process. Yeah. It's, um, it, it, it's been truly an incredible journey for me. And it's, uh, and I honestly believe that everything that's happened to me in my life has really prepared me to, you know, to fulfill this mission. And I, and I honestly believe that uh, to an extent that same kind of 
thing is true for all of us. I, I really believe, um, this is just me, but I, I believe that before we come here, uh, we live with God. And I think that before we come to the earth, I think that everything is planned out. I think that God plans it all with us. And he says, okay, you need to learn these certain things. So we're going to send you to this family and you're going to learn patience and you're going to have to endure some things, you know, and uh, you're going to learn about kindness. And, and, and so I think it's all kind of planned out and we all within us, within the heart of each one of us, we have this perfect, uh, uh, this perfect blueprint that can be our life. And uh, it's up to us to learn what that blueprint is and to try to get out of our own way and manifest that and develop into the most ascended being that we can, right? And that's all about learning to develop the ability to love other people unconditionally. And it's about taking care of uh, the poor, taking care of those around us that are suffering and bringing them along with us. And, um, the way I look at it is it's like, we, here we are in this world, and what, what are we supposed to do? I mean, is it really about earning as much money as we can? Is it about getting the biggest house we can or the nicest car? Well, not really, because when people die, what do they find out? Well, they're interviewed oftentimes when they die, and they, they find out that they're asked two questions mainly. Um, they, they're asked, how much were you able to learn in the world? And how much love were you able to develop? How much capacity do you have to love others? So that should give us some kind of a clue into what the purpose of this life is about, right? It's about our ability to, to what kind of ability do we develop to love other people? And how much do we learn? What else do you take with you? you know, and isn't it true much. that, um, and, and I'm not going to say is it true. I would love to hear your perspective on this. I have always said, that to truly love others we need to learn how to love ourselves first and one thing that emotion code does beautifully is help us stop the self-sabotage mm -hmm. yeah. so when we clear the self-sabotage and we learn to love ourselves for who we are warts and all tall short big thin whatever it is that we are we put ourselves in a position that we can stop judging ourselves and then stop judging others. Yeah. So I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on that, because I know that, that that's at the core of love, is stop the self-sabotage. Yeah, it's so true. You know, you can think of, um, the way I look at people now, after all these years of doing this, is uh, I believe that each person mm -hmm. uh, at, at some point was just a clear vessel, a clear pure being of light the problem though is that uh we end up being born and that's really the problem uh and what happens is that we're developing uh you know we inherit at conception yeah uh we inherit emotional baggage from our ancestors and then that's part of our burden you know their burden is our becomes now our burden the emotion code helps us to release that kind of stuff as well um and then we start to go through difficulties, you know, in our life and we develop all this emotional baggage. And so you can think of the average person as dragging behind them um, lots of suitcases full of rocks and steamer trunks that belong to great, great grandpa, grandpa, you know, and all, all this, all the suitcases and trunks are all full of rocks, the rocks being people's emotional baggage. And the emotion code is just a simple way, as you know, to come along and cut those loose. So that then you can, you can ascend, you become lighter, you become much more capable of manifesting into the world that which you're supposed to be able to manifest. And that, of course, is all, uh, is all buried for most people within their heart. Mm -hmm. And that's why getting rid of that wall around the heart, the heart wall, is so important too. Yeah, that's huge. I know some folks really are curious, because I know I get this question a lot. They'd look at me like, what do you mean you can get you can clear out all the emotional baggage from my ancestors. I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, here we go. Can you share a little bit about that? Because I'm sure there are some folks watching this going, what are they talking about? Absolutely. Well, there was a book written not too long ago about, um, uh, about a study that was done on the uh, grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. 
And what they found was these people whose grandparents went through the Holocaust have completely different chemical markers than the average person. In other words, the, uh, the levels of aging hormones in their blood are much higher. Um, they're much more susceptible to stress. Their stress hormone levels, cortisol levels, are much higher than an average person would be. Why is that? The only thing that they could figure out was that these people, this seems to be consistent. If your grandparents survived the Holocaust, they went through something horrific. Yes. And you're their grandchild, and you now are carrying some of that burden, and it's manifesting on blood tests, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they've also done studies. This is all recent stuff. They've done studies with... Um, uh, rodents and they find that if you take a rodent and you put it into a maze as it's going through that maze if it gets to a certain point and it receives some kind of a shock or some kind of a fright mm -hmm. and then you take the rodent out of the maze and it, it never sees the maze again and it has children offspring they found that you can take an offspring of that rodent that was shocked and up to 14 generations down the line for lower animals um, you can take an offspring and put it into the same maze. And when it gets to that same point where great, great, great grandpa was shocked, it'll freeze dead in its tracks and look around because somehow it knows something, something happened, something dangerous happened here. And scientists are trying to figure out how in the world this information is passed on. Well, we know how it's passed on. It's in the emotion code. It's called inherited trapped mm -hmm. emotions. emotions. And so, um, why would a rodent share that information? Well, to try to preserve its offspring. And your ancestors did the same thing. So you see the, the grief or the fear, the resentment, the anger, uh, the betrayal, whatever it might have been that your ancestor went through, mm -hmm. uh, that energy can be passed down many generations. Yes. And uh, so, so yes, um, it's, it's just one of the things that we initially didn't know about. But um, as we were using the emotion code, uh, this came up. It just, um, it's one of the things that's, that now we see all the time. We all have inherited emotional baggage. And the now, fascinating thing, yeah, go, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say though, so we heal ourselves. I, I believe you wrote that we all have between 500 to 1,000 trapped emotions in our bodies in, in a lifetime. Is that, did I read that properly? Well, we think that the average person has about 350 or so. Okay. Now, there could be more for some people. All right. So we're clearing out our, our trapped emotions, mm -hmm. and we get married, mm -hmm. and we have children. They're not going to have the baggage that we had from our past, uh, from our uh, ancestors, correct? Well, we often will pass uh, emotional baggage to our kids, depending on how powerful the emotion was. A lot of the time, what'll happen is when a trapped emotion is shared from one generation to another, mm -hmm. these are shared at conception, according to what we find testing the body. A lot of the times, these will kind of lose their strength and dissipate and just go away in a generation or two. But sometimes these will go back for a long, long way. Let me, let me tell you a story that'll help to illustrate this. Um, about two years after the emotion code came out, so this would have been in 2009, I asked my daughter to work on me one day. She was in Seattle. I was at my home here in Utah, Southern Utah. And, uh, and so I hung up the phone after talking with her and she starts working on me. Now, this is one of the unique things about the emotion code is that it can be done, as you know, at a distance. There's no barrier because it's, this is pure energy medicine. There is no barrier of distance at all. Mm -hmm. And so she's working on me and right away she finds that I have an inherited trapped emotion. And the emotion is hopelessness. And she, as she's testing and getting more information, she's connected to my subconscious mind. And this is all very concrete. And we teach all this in the uh, emotion code and the body code. She finds that um, I had actually passed this to her when she was conceived. When I was conceived, I got it from my dad. When he was conceived, he got it from his mom. And so she's testing this and getting this information. And she goes back. It keeps going, going, going. In the mother's line, it goes back to 22 generations ago. Uh, to sometime probably in about the 1400s. Now, when my daughter arrives at this point of origin, all of a sudden, she can feel the presence of this woman standing next to her, this grandmother that this started with. And she can feel her emotions. She can feel this grandmother from the Middle Ages. She can feel how desperate she is to have this emotional energy released from her posterity because this is what she had passed on. 
all those generations down the line. But she can also feel how desperate this woman is. Um, uh, she can feel how desperate it is, she is to have this removed, but she can also feel how grateful, overwhelmed with gratitude this woman is that this is going to be released. And um, when my daughter releases it, she can feel it ripple through and release from all those intervening generations, and, uh, and it's gone. Well, two things happened. I'm sitting at my desk, uh, you know, 1,500 or so miles away, and, um, and I have this interest, this really amazing experience. All my life, I had dealt with um, that feeling of hopelessness, you know, but I never really knew, never really could put my finger on it. In fact, I'll tell you something, Terry, when I was writing the Emotion Code book the first time, mm -hmm. um, the revision's coming out, you know, in May, but when I was writing it the first time, if you would have asked me, if anyone would have asked me during that time to describe in one word how that project felt, writing that book, without any hesitation at all, I would have used the word hopeless. I would have said, it feels like a hopeless project, but I'm continuing. Well, imagine living next to a factory that's running 24 hours a day, and you, you were born next to this factory, and you still live right next to the factory, and imagine that 24 hours a day, there's this hum coming out of the factory. Well, you wouldn't even recognize it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Unless the factory suddenly goes out of business mm -hmm. and the hum stops, the silence would be deafening. And that's exactly what this was like for me. When my daughter released that emotion of hopelessness from me, suddenly for the first time in my life, instantly I comprehended it. I'd never comprehended it before. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized that background music, that feeling, that low level hopelessness had been there my whole entire life. I never could put my finger on it until that instant. It changed my life, and it changed her life as well. Um, she is one of the most amazing artists that I've ever seen. She's a, she paints in oils, and she paints portraits. and I mean, she's just unbelievable. Until that day, she'd never painted a thing. And within a year, she had an art showing in Seattle, and all this art was just pouring out of her. Unbelievable. And it's continued to pour out of her to this day. But I believe... You see, I had passed, I, I had shared that inherited emotion of hopelessness with her when she was conceived. And I think that she never would have painted a thing if that hadn't been removed, see. And so we're all, all every one of us, you see, is the product of not only our own baggage from our own divorce, from our own, you know, the times we were bullied as a kid or we used to cry ourselves to sleep at night and the breakups from high school and junior high and all that kind of stuff. We all have all that still. That baggage is affecting us but we also have the burden of our ancestors. And the beautiful thing about it is we can find that emotional baggage and release it. And when we do, it releases not only from us, the living, but it also releases from those that have passed on. Let me share one more story with you about that, okay? Yeah, because that's um, a question I get a lot in my practice. Is uh -huh. they say to me, what do you mean it releases in them? I don't get this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, because they're dead, we tend to think that they are no more, but nothing is further from the truth. They're, they're still there. Yeah. And in fact, I'll tell you something. At every seminar that I do, uh, somebody will have an inherited emotion. And so I'll end up on stage with this person. And, and the subconscious mind, you see, of each one of us is so intelligent. It comprehends things that consciously we don't have any knowledge of. It, it knows. and so. Um, to give you an example, uh, I was at a uh, workshop once. There, I had about 300 people in the audience. Mm -hmm. And there's a uh, woman that I ask if somebody's in pain. And a woman comes up out of the audience and she limps up on the stage and she's got terrible pain in her hip that she's had for uh, about a year. And on a zero to 10 scale of pain, 10 being called 911, it was the nine. So she's one point away from going to emergency. She's seen several doctors for this. Nobody's been able to help her. And so, um, I tested her. I found one imbalance, cleared it, it, took her pain from a nine to a four, okay? And then the next thing that I found was that she had an inherited trapped emotion of fear. She'd gotten it from her father. He'd gotten it from his father, who got it from his father, who got it from his father. It went back 11 generations in the father's line. Now, this might sound completely crazy, but I'm telling you, um, look, I just work here, and so it's not up to me. I'm just trying to show people what's really going on. So um, anyway... So as I, as I am used to doing, um, 
I'm getting information from her. She's holding out her arm. I'm asking questions. Strong response from her body is yes. Weak response is no. And so I'm, I'm asking this question about this inherited trapped emotion. We identify it. And then I asked her something. I said, okay, these ancestors of yours, these grandfathers, um, are they here with us? And they always show up for this, for the release of the emotions, right? They always show up. So I asked her, I said, well, okay, are these, are these grandfathers here with us? And the answer was yes, they were all here in the room. And so I asked, okay, well, are they out in the audience? No. See, her subconscious mind knew this. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anybody. Neither could anybody else except one person in the audience. And I'll tell you the rest of the story in a second. So I said, well, are they, are they floating around in the air? No. Are they on the stage with us? Yeah, they're all standing on the stage, and they always are. And this, this sounds, you know, maybe crazy to some people. That but I'm telling I, I understand. I've been there. <laughs> I get yeah. it. Look, I just do what I'm told. So anyway, so they were all up there on the stage with us. And so I released the trapped emotion from her, and the pain was instantly gone. And uh, she's literally dancing around on the stage. And um, no, no more pain at all. And this is typical with trapped emotions. Most pain is caused by trapped emotions. And so uh, anyway, uh, then I tested her. I said, okay, are those grandfathers still here with us now? And the answer was no, because... These, these ancestors will come for the release of the emotional energy, and then, and then they're gone again. And I don't know why that is. They're apparently really busy. I don't know what they're doing, but somebody's got them <laughs> working, I guess. So anyway, I go back. I, I finish my lecture, and I go back to our booth. And this woman comes up to me. I've been there about a minute, and this woman comes up to me, and here's what she says. She says, Dr. Nelson, she said, I'm one of those people that has the ability to see spirits that other people don't see and she said i have to tell you she said it's kind of been a blessing but it's kind of been a curse she oh, yeah. said i but she said i'm one of those people and she said i just wanted you to know something she said when you were talking about those ancestors up there on the stage she said i could see them all just like you described i just wanted you to know that they were there just like you said but she said there was something else going on and i don't know that you're aware of this she said what i saw was surrounding the stage were at least 200 spirits wow. and it, it it was clear to me i knew who they were they were the they were this woman's yet to be born descendants and they were there rejoicing that they were not going to have to take on this woman's crippling emotional mm -hmm. baggage and um so so you just answered a question I asked um, a little okay. bit ago about our future descendants once we clear out all of our baggage. So that's the answer we were looking for. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So, you know, the bottom line is that um, there's a whole lot going on around us all the time. And there's a whole lot that we're not really aware of. That's but, true. Um, but we're starting to become more aware. And so welcome to the 21st century. That's where we live now. And what a gift that there are those of us who are willing to surrender to, you know, w w instead of living continuously in our practical, tactical, and logical world, we allow ourselves to shift into and to integrate the emotional, the energetic, the intuitive, and the spiritual in what it is that we do. Because I, you know, it, it is so critical to marry both of them, whether, again, whether it's in the workplace, your business, uh, or in your life, to be able to do it all together. And oftentimes we get really, really scared. And, you know, listening to you and what it is that you have done in order to be able to create this movement of healing, which is in fact what you've done. You've created a healing movement with the emotion code. Um, you allow people to actually go to a very quiet place of healing because you don't have to go into all of the baggage of whatever happened. So I, I would like for you to address that because a lot of folks don't want to do this kind of work because they're concerned that they have to relive the pain of whatever it is that they went through. Right, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a really good point. There are certain healing methodologies that, uh, that work that way, where you have to go back and re-experience all the grief that you experienced when you found out your husband was cheating on you, or you know, when you found out that your father died, or whatever it was. And um, 
with the emotion code, on the other hand, it's a very simple process because here's, here's essentially how it works. When you experience an intense emotion, for whatever reason, sometimes that emotional energy can become trapped in the body. And a trapped emotion is like a little ball of energy from about the size of a baseball to the size of a softball. Those energy, energies can lodge anywhere in the body. And um, finding those is a really simple process. It's a matter of uh, asking questions and getting answers from the subconscious mind because the conscious mind doesn't really know anything. The subconscious mind knows everything. And so we ask the subconscious mind and we're able to tap into that using these binary methods of, uh, of muscle testing, um, holding the arm straight out, getting a strong answer for yes, a weak answer for no. There are various methods of self-testing. There's the sway test, like you were talking about earlier, where the body will sway forward if you're holding thoughts of truth, backward if you're holding thoughts of uh, falsity. And so um, all, all we try to do is very rapidly identify what emotion it is and then ask if there's anything else we need to know about it. Mm -hmm. and, that, and if the subconscious says yes, then we might need to dig a little bit deeper but um, it's really just identifying the absolute bare minimum that the subconscious mind needs us to identify in order to uh, enable the release or allow that emotional energy to be released so that we have closure on that thing. And so if you can, if you can imagine, it's kind of like emotional surgery. It's like high-speed emotional surgery. We go in, boom, boom, boom. We find those emotions. We release them. Most people can find and release a trapped emotion in less than a minute once they learn the process, right? Very easy. And so, yeah. And so there's really, uh, um, there's really not enough time. I mean, if you're releasing a trapped emotion in one minute, then going on to the next one, there's not a whole lot of time to really, you know, delve into that and and refeel mm -hmm. all those emotions. We don't want you to go in and refeel all that stuff. It's not necessary. All we're yeah, what we're after is just the release of that emotional ball, that ball of emotional energy. And uh, once you've identified it and answered the questions that you need to answer, usually less than a minute, uh, you can release it by using a magnet or your fingertips just over the top of the head or down the back a few times and boom, that energy's gone. And we've never seen one of these energies come back, gone forever. It's kind of like if you take... Um, uh, the analogy that I always think of is, is if you take a credit card out of your wallet, for example, and you rub a magnet on that magnetic strip, that data is transformed. It's gone. How long does it take to get rid of that data? Not very long. And mm -hmm. you've just deleted it. Right. Got to get a new credit card now. That's how this is. <laughs> so Dr. Bradley, uh, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Bradley, <laughs> Dr. Nelson, I would love for you to share as a practitioner, um, we all of us who are practitioners, because you know there are a lot of tools that I use, and, and you know I use the NLP, the EFT, da, da, da. I know exactly what tool to use for what person. It's a feeling, it's a knowledge. I either hear the words, I, I feel it, I see, it, you know, I, I'm shown the image, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. The thing is that that is all intuitive. That that is all intuition. One of the challenges that people I work with have is. Well, how do I develop this intuition that you have? And I'm like, well, I've been at this a long time. You know, how do I develop this intuition so that I can begin to do what you're doing in terms of trusting and listening to those uh, messages that come, the prodding? I call them little prod, you know, we get prodded over and over and over again. And frankly, if we don't listen, we get hit over the head. Uh, and sometimes we don't want to, well, we don't like what it takes to get, you know, for the universe to hit us over the head with stuff because we haven't been listening. Sure. So <laughs> what is it? What, what piece of advice can you give uh, people in general, not just the practitioners, but people in general about tapping into and listening to those intuitive hits when they're working with other people? Well, I think that, um, <clears throat> I think the, the, the two things that I alluded to earlier, um, asking mm -hmm. for help, asking and then listening being open to that and expecting that expecting that help to come right mm -hmm. um those those are really uh, critical things and of course with the emotion code uh what people find uh, and of course the body code as well most people start with the emotion code what they'll find is that um it doesn't take very long doing the emotion code and they'll be they'll be testing someone maybe working on their self or whatever, and they'll find this strange phenomenon that occurs where a split second before they get the answer on muscle testing, they know the answer, 
it just kind of slips quietly into their consciousness and they'll realize a split second later, they get the answer on muscle testing and, and they'll say to themselves, gee, you know, I knew that that was going to be the answer. How did I know that? That is your yeah. intuition, you see. There and you if you cultivate that, if you cultivate that, those sudden strokes of intelligence that come to you, uh, you can get to a point where you've developed that enough that you, you really don't even need muscle testing. For example, I have a daughter who is uh, just turned 19. And um, for about five years now, since she was 14, she's about 14 or so, learned how to do this kind of work. She did the muscle testing, it seems like, for about a month or two. And then she just kind of decided, you know what, I don't really need this. And she just does it all through intuition. And it, it's a really fun thing to watch. Cool, cool, cool. That's really, really neat. Well, I would love for you, I mean, this is the old cover, the emotion coding oh, yeah. on Amazon or in Barnes and Noble, but show off your new cover. Okay, let me grab the new one, hang on. <laughs> oh, too funny. As in Okay, sorry. <laughs> Slap this is the new face with your head. This is the new cover. We just got this actually yesterday. Beautiful. It's really nice. It's got raised lettering, and it has uh, the new book has a forward by Tony Robbins. Very nice. Um, which we're super excited about. And um, uh, yeah, there's a whole another chapter in here. The original book was about seventy thousand words. The new one's about ninety thousand. We've added a whole new chapter right. on inherited trapped emotions. Brilliant. Uh, we've added lots more stories. Um, lots of um, just lots of great stuff in here, mm -hmm. and so uh, so what yeah. I love is that the title has a, uh, all the chakra colors are in there, right? Yeah, it's really pretty. Okay, really fun. So, and it comes out May seventh, and we will have the link to go right to Amazon. Is going to be right underneath the video, right underneath. Okay, and I understand that your free gift for the audience are two chapters. Yes, that's right. Code at emotioncodegift.com. Yep. Emotioncodegift.com. And that's, that's uh, the first couple chapters of the book on audio and also um, uh, in PDF. So right. you can check it out. And again, you can download the emotion code and the body code software from either iTunes or Google Play. Uh, there are times I've got my computer going on one end when I'm working with a client. I've got the, the chart on the phone going. I've got the book going. I've got it all going in all directions. <laughs> so I really want to thank you for being here with us today, uh, Dr. Nelson. I appreciate your knowledge. I appreciate the, the gift that you have given the world because I have seen it for myself, the miracles that this, and I am going to use the word miracles, the miracles that this technique has created not only in myself but in my family and with my clients it is just absolutely amazing and again i'm a businesswoman so when i coach folks i coach them on their stress and part of the stress um you know they may hire me for like a three-month thing and the first month is all about clearing out all of these self-sabotaging emotions yeah. and also learn learning stress management techniques and becoming the best that we can be as the leader so that we're in peak performance so we can guide and coach our own employees and coworkers. So the emotion code helps like you would not believe and I so appreciate it. And yes, I do do this. Most of my clients are distance. I do not do them in person. So I wanna validate what you were talking about with your daughter. I use Zoom just like you and I are, are now doing this uh, online. That's how I uh, work with a lot of my clients. And if we have a hard time meeting, I just do a distance session without them. And I copy and paste all the emotions and send them to them. And this is what we cleared out. And it's yep. just absolutely amazing. It's <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so, again, thank you so very much. Thank you to our audience for listening to us uh, today. Chat about the emotion code and intuition and how it's all interconnected. And how we, when we ask, it is truly given. I'm Terry Wildeman, your host. Thank you so much, Dr. Nelson. And we look forward to seeing you on your seventh cent business powered by angels and intuition. See you next time. Take care. Unlock the power in you and elevate your seven cents with our intuitive leadership training programs, masterminds, VIP days, and retreats. 
To learn more, visit intuitiveleadership.com.